Welcome to the channel and today we're going to be talking all about the flat stick. Now, YouTube videos in general don't do very well when we're talking about the putter because let's be fair, it's not the sexy part of golf, is it? But it kind of, well, it could be the most important part of the golf. If you've watched all those YouTube videos about your driver and your mid irons, your long irons, your wedges, it brings you to this point. Now, if you get better at your long game and your short game, but you still can't use this, your scores probably don't massively improve. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking through some of the biggest issues that I see in amateur golfers. Now, I play a lot of pro-am events, and I see some very quirky and interesting putting strokes, some setup, interesting setups, grips, all sorts, you name it. I think sometimes with a putter, we're given the freedom to kind of do what feels comfortable. If we had that freedom on the tee and on the fairways, the, all of us, me included, we'd be a disaster at golf. So we need some fundamentals to follow. Now in this video as well, I'm gonna be using hack motion. You may have seen this in previous videos because I like to bring you some data. Some of you golfers out there are not only visual golfers, but you like seeing numbers attached to the visual. So we're gonna be talking today all about the wrist and the movement of the, the putting stroke. I see a lot of golfers whip it back, whip it through without much rotation of the chest, the shoulders and the arms, okay? I see far too much flappy wrist on the way through and this is gonna give you the data that supports why you shouldn't do that, but also give you some drills on how to stop it. I've gotta be honest, the way I'm gonna be demonstrating this is on a downhill left to right putt, which is an absolute disaster, but that's where the sun is. So one of the things that I try and encourage my golfers to do is just be a little bit more static with the wrist, you're encouraging the upper body to move back and through. Bit of a poor stroke as I was talking. But my address position is plus eight uh, with extension, plus seven as I got to the kind of back of my stroke, and plus nine with extension as I got through my stroke. So there's not much movement going on at all. What I see a lot of is this kind of nervous sort of release and rotation of the face as I go through the ball there. This one now is a lot more movement from plus nine to plus three with 11 degrees of rotation in the forearm and that's where the disaster actually happens so when we get on to distance control it's very difficult to replicate the same if you're trying to replicate the same shot twice in a row when you're encouraging your hands to move. Now, imagine if you're chipping. When you chip, you encourage a little bit of wrist action, which helps you get the ball airborne, also gives you that little bit of tiny bit of speed through impact. Take the wrist out of it, and the ball travels a little bit less distance. Here right now, we don't need distance. So I would often encourage golfers to be really static in the wrists. There is always a little bit of minimal release. And even if you tried not to release it, the data here will tell you that you did. I, as I did on my first one, I released it only a couple of degrees. So by trying to not move my wrist at all, there was some natural release. But those golfers that get a bit further away and then just start to kind of flip the wrist up on, on the way through the impact position, they kind of get that release upwards. There, middle cup, don't mind it. I've gone from 12 to three to 19. And that's encouraged a lot of wrist action in this direction. How you keep the club face square through impact is always gonna be very, very difficult. A drill I want you to work on is called the gates. Make it club head wide, ball there, T peg to designate where you're gonna hit from, and a T peg for your length of stroke on the way back. So we're gonna try and encourage no wrist movement but maximum, kind of maximum shoulder rotation. So you're encouraging, you're encouraging yourself to use your bigger muscles. Bigger muscles will always be more repeatable over the putting stroke. So if you are finding a way of actually going, right, okay, this is my short putt, longer putt, longer putt. That's gonna be more consistent than that, because now we start really struggling on distance control, as that was, as Mr. Hack Motion was saying there. So if I go really, really stiff on the way back, just keep my wrist solid, use my shoulders. Good stroke. I'm aiming to stop my club before the gate, so I don't want to see the wrist pushing the golf club through the gates in the slightest. I've got minus six, minus five, minus six, are pretty good numbers in terms of 
movement of the wrists, okay? So we're taking the risks, the risks, the, and the risks, the wrists out of this stroke all together, okay? And the data is gonna back me up on that, I hope. If I get a little bit wristy, what you'll find is the putter will go past this tee peg and it'll probably hit one of the other tee pegs or at least go over it and the tee peg will vanish. Too much wrist. I've gone from plus six to minus seven to plus two. Loads and loads of, that means basically as I took the putter away, I went in there. So if I go in there, what you'll also find is the putter goes inside. If my putter starts to go inside, I now can deliver that putter back to the golf ball from the inside with an open face relative to target, hence missing to the right. So many variables happen and occur when we make these kind of what I would say relatively controllable and simple errors. Okay, so once you've finished on the short drill, so maybe practice that from four to six feet. Really gauging the feeling of using your upper body. Another good drill is put, this, put, a, put an alignment stick or a golf club in under your arms here. And you're just feeling that motion. So we're trying to get away from this. We get like kind of fast shoulder turn and the wrist angle. We're trying to make the stroke itself a little bit longer so you can get the flex consistency in the rhythm as well. That's really key. Now we move over to a, a longer put. So now we're going to go keeping the same movement back and through and trying to encourage good numbers. There we go, eight, seven, nine. So very minimal movement of flexion and extension during the putting stroke, okay? Do we go again, use the shoulders. Minimal movement, seven, six, 10 of extension and flexion. If you're a player that uses a lot of wrist during your stroke, you'll find that you don't use much of your chest and your shoulders. Therefore, distance control suddenly becomes a little bit more difficult. Your putter finishes up super high. I've gone 11 all the way down to two and then released up through to 13. You may find if you were to really analyze the way you're striking the golf ball is you actually launch the ball. So as you're coming in, if you're going from flexion to extension, so if you're bowing to cupping, again, just like a normal golf swing, you're adding loft through impact. So a normal loft on a putter is about three to four degrees. You add through five or six. If that ball leaves the face and jumps up and it starts to bounce, you get an inconsistency then on how the ball rolls. It takes longer to get into its roll. If it takes longer to get into its roll, you're gonna really struggle then to understand how your distance control can be consistent from that style of strike. Whereas if we're keeping that putter face more neutral throughout, we're maintaining the correct loft and the ball won't bounce off the face as much. It won't jump up. Or if you're a player that kind of, if you were to, add flexion on the way back and hold that through, you would come in with negative loft, you would hit the ball down into the ground, then the ball bounces, and again, you'll really struggle with your consistency of strike. So just trying to feel that you've got the rotation of the shoulders back and through, and we're not encouraging any sort of movement this way, because that's a shocker, okay? So just trying to make sure we've got that nice consistent roll from shoulders into follow through. And all my putts there, one's gone in. What are the chances? I've been here four days, not able to put all week. One of them has gone in. The furthest one there is the one with the old flicky wrists, all right? It's not what we want to see at all, okay? I would often start with making sure that you're good from three, four, five, six feet. Use the gate drill, use the putter these, use the tees to bring your putter back to push your putter through. And then obviously if, you can, if you've got anything like this where you can create some data and that gives, you in, that gives you incredible feedback, incredible feedback. If you don't, the gated drills are just fantastic, even if you're the best putter on the planet, okay? I've watched Rory McIlroy get very frustrated at the gate drill. So the best players in the world use it. They probably hate it but it is the most beneficial putting drill on the planet. Then move out to what I've just done there, 30 feet down the slope, then go 40 feet, 30 feet up the slope. Learn your, your shoulder movements, get confident with the putter moving further away from the golf ball because of your shoulders, as opposed to 
for the old flappy, flicky wrists back and through. Guys, I hope this video has helped. If it has, drop a comment down below. How is your putting? Let me know. Is it the strength of your game? Is it a weakness? If it's a strength, make it stronger. If it's a weakness, make it less of a weakness and we'll all become good golfers. I need to heed my own advice as well. Guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.